Mr. Ross Axelrod, adding a photo novelty to your DJ business. Thank you very much, Big Daddy. I appreciate it. How's everyone doing? So far, so good, right? Why are you terrible? Where to sign up for the Ross Well, I will send you a link right after that, Jordan. Thank you. Uh, anyways, if you guys were expecting that wonderful, good-looking gentleman up there with the Superman shirt, I hate to disappoint you. You're getting Lex Luthor tonight instead. The nice shaved head. Uh, that's, that's what my wife tells me. That's what my wife tells me. So I'm all in for that. We can switch that over now. Thank you. Uh, anyways, guys, I'm here to talk to you today about adding a photo novelty to your DJ business. Uh, of all the people that are here, how many people do not have a photo novelty added for their business so far? Okay. Who does have one? We've got a couple. All right. I think this is going to be good for you guys because it'll have a lot of good information for the people who don't and maybe a couple tidbits for the people that already do. Um, just to tell you a little bit of background about me, uh, I've been in the DJ business for about 30 years and I own multiple companies. So I've been doing photo booths, uh, photo novelties for about 20 of those 30 years. So a lot of experience doing a lot of different things, a lot of which I'm going to talk to you about today. So uh, let's dive in. First thing we're going to talk about today, uh, obviously some of the photo novelty options, what to buy, what I personally use. I'll give you some pointers. Of course, why do you, why should you add a photo novelty to your business? <clears throat> of course, how to staff it, training that staff, uh, how to promote it, and of course, how to sell it to your clients. That's what we're going to go over and let's dive right in. Let me tell you first why I added a photo booth novelty to my business. I was, this was like 20 years ago and I still noticed that a lot of my, at most of the events I did, there was a photo novelty at almost all of them. There was one or two companies back then that just did photo novelties and they did almost everything. <clears throat> so I would refer to them. Um, and I was like, wow, almost all these events have a photo novelty. So that's why I decided to add it. Currently, 80% of the events in my market have a photo novelty. And considering we do over 200 events per year, if I can book a photo novelty on them at an average $500 profit, that's a lot of money, $100,000 in profit, just by adding a photo novelty to an event. And what, what the easiest thing is, if you already book them for DJ, they're more inclined to buy something else from you. So it's a, it's a much easier sell. Why should you guys add it? It's a whole nother story. <clears throat> First thing is you want to grow your business. You want to do something else. You want to add to your repertoire of stuff. Of course, that leads to more income, more money to take in. Hopefully more money goes in your pocket. <clears throat> uh, when I first started, as I said, I referred other photo novelty companies. Who here refers other companies? If somebody, if a client says, oh, do you do a photo booth or whatever? Who here refers other companies? Got a handful. You can stop doing that now because when you send that client to another company, they're not only going to sell them on what they offer uh, photo booth wise, but maybe they also do DJ. Maybe they also do something else that you do. Or maybe down the line they get into DJing where they're going to end up keeping that client. So in essence, you're giving that client away. I'm a big believer is I never say no. Yeah, if they say, do I offer? Absolutely. I'm going to make it happen because I don't want to lose them and all the p potential other business I can get from them, their guests themselves. If I, if I did a wedding for somebody two years ago, they might hire me to do a photo booth at their son's birthday party in five years. Who knows? They can be a client for life if they have a good experience with you. So I stopped referring clients to other people and I kept them for myself. Uh, anybody do white labeling where they will hire another company to represent them at an event saying they do a photo booth or anything like that? I see a couple people shaking their heads. You can stop doing that now <laughs> if you have it yourself. With a white label, the advantage is great. You don't have to make the investment. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about it. You just have them do it. That's fine. Uh, the problem is, at least what I was experiencing, was that when I did a white label, 
those people weren't representing me and my company the way I wanted to be represented. I had this one guy, just, I was DJing, saw the, hired him for a photo booth, he's in the back, on his phone the whole time. That's not how I want, I don't want people going over to the photo booth saying, oh, Pulse Entertainment provided that photo booth, but the guy was sitting on his phone all night. <clears throat> if you white label, you're letting somebody else control that stuff. If you do it yourself, you can control it. And then of course, keeping up with your competition. In my market, probably 75, 80% of all DJ companies have some sort of photo novelty. So if I don't have it, somebody's gonna go to another, uh, another company because they have it. And that's not what I want them to do. I want them to come to me for everything. I'll take care of it for them. <clears throat> I'm getting, getting over a little bit of a cold, so I'm gonna take a quick drink. When it comes to the photo novelty options, I'm gonna briefly hit on these today. <clears throat> There's traditional photo favors. There's green screen photo favors, step and repeat photo favors, photo booths like social booths, regular booths, novelty booths, stuff like that. You'll find a couple of my slides are kind of busy. I purposely did that to make sure you guys could take a screenshot for some of those things. Uh, all the other ones are kind of generic, so you'll be okay with that. Um, so we're gonna dive into some of these photo booth novelties. This is an example of a traditional photo favor. A traditional photo favor has a photography background. Like if you were to go to JCPenney and get a photo, you know, family photos, stuff like that, photography background, that's what this uses. You end up getting a photo very similar to this. <clears throat> Traditional photo favors utilize that photography background. So you need a set of background poles to hold that up. You also need a prosumer, make a, make a point. You don't need a professional camera. You need a prosumer camera, like a Rebel T3 or T3i. Those are great cameras. They're prosumer because anybody could usually get them. Uh, you don't need the big $5,000 camera just to do photo favors. These are quick and easy. These prosumer cameras are really great for that and they still produce a really great picture. You need a laptop or a desktop, I guess, if you want to schlep that around. Um, but a laptop, you, could be, you just need one that prints. You don't need one that has 20 million bells and whistles. You just need one that can print a photo. And a lot of uh, <clears throat> Chromebooks and stuff like that can do that nowadays. They're like 200 bucks, so not, not crazy. Uh, you need a printer. You need a professional printer. You need a die sub printer. Um, I have a DMP. Uh, I have a high tie. I have a Mitsubishi. Uh, they're great. They produce high quality photos in a very quick time. The media, uh, ink and paper that goes inside is relatively reasonable for the amount of prints that you get. Uh, so you're not using like a, <clears throat> an HP printer that you get at Staples. You don't want to do that. You're going to go right through all your ink and paper really quick and it's not going to be worthwhile for you. Uh, when we do traditional photo favors, we do a four by six print because it's the most cost effective. All these die sub printers, the most cost effective print is a four by six. So well, that's what we do, makes it nice and easy. Average print is, depending on the printer, can be anywhere from 25 to 35 cents per print, which isn't bad for on the spot printing. And then of course, we also <clears throat> offer tons of upgrades like frames for the photos or even plastic sleeves, uh, step and repeat backdrop, which I'll get into in a minute, a red carpet, stanchion, something that kind of pizzazzes it up a little bit, <laughs> makes it more worthwhile. Um, just to tell you a little bit of how I do photo favors, when I do photo favors, I have a three person crew. I have a photographer, a computer person, and then I have the optional third person. The optional third person is if we have frames or something that they have to put together like magnets or something like that. <clears throat> the photographer obviously takes the photo. Typically we take about five photos, then we take the SD card out and give it to the computer person to print. You can also hardwire the camera to your laptop, but what I found is that usually requires the running of cables, taping down of cables, and when you have people walking in and out of your booth area, that just leads to problems. Even if it's taped down, sometimes you still get the little trip here and there. So I'm a big believer, just go with the easy way, which is the SD card. Every five photos or so, hey, computer person, here's the, here's the SD card. You have a blank one. You keep taking photos while the 
computer person is printing out all, all, everything. And then if you have the frames or sleeves or something that has to be put together, that's what that third person is there for, to put all that stuff together and make sure that it's out in a relatively reasonable amount of time for the guest to come back and pick it up. So that's typically how we do <clears throat> traditional photo favors. Here's a great busy slide for you. <laughs> it tells you where to buy all this stuff. <clears throat> uh, the backdrops, <clears throat> SD cards, camera, backdrop holes, laptop, stanchions, red carpet. I got almost all, everything off of Amazon. B&H photo maybe pitched in a little bit. I think I got my laptop from Best Buy only because I wanted to see it in person, in action, before I bought it. <clears throat> Printers, I go to a local guy. To me, I'm in the Philadelphia area, uh, Bob from ABS Imaging. He's great because he takes care of me. He's also local, um, but he also has clients from all across the country. So if you need something, call him. I told him I told you to call. He'll take care of you. Uh, he sells printers. <clears throat> he sells the media to go along with it as well. So one-stop shop. Uh, for my step and repeats, which I'll show you a picture of in a second, uh, I go to step and event step and repeat .com. They are $125 shipped. They also run specials. I can get you can get them as low as like 90 bucks, and that's great. It's eight foot by eight foot custom backdrop instead of using the photography style backdrop. You have an eight foot by eight foot custom backdrop. You can get it up as large as you want, pretty much. Obviously, the price just goes up. I use an eight foot by eight foot. <clears throat> Those are fantastic upgrades and upsells. Um, it cost me 125. I charge three to four hundred because I sell it to the client. I go to the client. I say, listen. I gotta produce this eight foot by eight foot backdrop. It's custom designed, it's printed, it then has to be shipped. And they're like, wow, yeah, that, that is worth three, four hundred dollars, even though it only cost me 100, 125 bucks to get. So um, it's all on how you present it. <clears throat> For frames, I use Sherman Specialty, shermanparty.com, qlt.com. Cardboard frames, they have as little as like 15, 20 cents a frame. So you can literally spend $100 on frames, have a boatload that'll last you a while. Uh, total rough investment to get started on traditional photo favors is $1,300 to $1,500, which isn't a crazy amount of money to get started to add a photo novelty. <clears throat> As I said before, my average profit for an event is roughly $500. So three events later, you have a fully paid off photo novelty. This is a sample of a step and repeat. <clears throat> this girl had two logos, it was for a bat mitzvah. <clears throat> friends theme, that's why you see Misha in the friends theme thing there. This is what I sell. I show them a picture of this and I say, hey, eight foot by eight foot, red carpet in front. Actually, it's actually a pink carpet for this one because we got a custom pink carpet, which you can upsell for. Amazon, this custom pink carpet, $89. I bought it for 89, but I charged her 200. So, I, oh, I gotta get a custom pink carpet. So she was like, okay, no problem. <clears throat> so that is a step and repeat. And when it comes to the next thing we're going to talk about, it's green screen photo favors. Green screen photo favors are identical to the traditional ones, except you have a green background instead of the photography style background or a step and repeat background. This is a, a green background. You may need some additional lighting for this. Once again, you can get that on Amazon for 40 bucks. It's a little pole, shines a light over there, make, makes the photos come out nicer. Uh, the reason you need the extra lighting is because most green screen programs need the entire screen to be green. And if it's folded in any way, you're gonna get shadows. That's, what the lighting, that's where the lighting comes in. And it flattens out those shadows, makes it nice and easy for that green screen program to take all the green out and let you add a background. You also need software, of course. I use Green Screen Wizard. It's $129, one time. Buy it one time, they let you install it on two or three computers, because I always have a backup computer whenever I go somewhere. They let you install it, and you know what? They're, they're so nice. I've upgraded computers, reinstalled it. Oh, can you reset my, my code? Five minutes later, it's reset. They're really great with customer service. They just want to make sure you're taken care of. And they usually come out with an update every year so that you can get the new latest and greatest thing. Uh, they also uh, allow you to save the photos instantly right in their 
uh, software so that you can give them to the clients at the end. Uh, they have backgrounds for sale or you can design your own as well. Here are some samples of some of the backgrounds of <coughs> green screen stuff that we have. We have the generic stuff like places around the world, you know, a beach in Hawaii. Uh, I bought the Hollywood Magazine one from the, from the software company. Um, we did a custom, a couple custom ones for certain parties and it's just real easy. It literally takes me three minutes to add a background to, to my repertoire of stuff. Giving you some pointers on green screen. As with all photo novelties, <laughs> the client should get a copy of all the digital photos. Because at the end of the day, if you gave them prints, that's fine. But they want the digitals. They want to put it all up on social media as well. So you might as well give them a copy of the digital photos. Flash drive. You can put it, upload it to a Dropbox, send it to them. Doesn't matter. They just want a copy of it. So just make sure they get a copy. <clears throat> the one little piece of information that I like to impart on people when it comes to green screen is you have to have a code when it comes to the background that is actually being chosen. So for instance, if you go back to this photo here, <clears throat> let's look at the, uh, the first one all the way on the left there. When these people come up to the photographer, they've already picked their backdrop or their background because they see it on a big easel. I have a big poster about three feet by three feet on a big easel and there's a bunch of backgrounds that they, oh, I want that one. The photographer says, hey, what background would you like? Oh, I want the zebra stripe thingy. Okay, great. Photographer takes the picture, turns around to a piece of paper, writes down on the piece of paper, girl in pink dress, girl in black dress, zebra stripe background. So that way the computer operator knows when they, he gets that SD card in five minutes, that the girl with the pink dress and, with, and the girl with the black dress get a zebra background. That's the only real code that actually has to be de done or taken care of because those things are processed not instantly, they're processed a few minutes later. So if you're going down a list of stuff, it's the only thing you have to be wary of. But in the 20 years I've been doing green screen, I've never had an issue with that communication. As I said, <clears throat> you show all your backgrounds on a large poster, it's a lot easier than letting people flip through. I used to, st I started with printing out a copy of every single background, putting them in a photo album, letting people flip through. It took people forever to pick a background. It's up on a big poster, really large. They'll be able to check it out and see it, make it uh, a quicker decision, which keeps the line moving. <clears throat> Going into some photo booth options. <coughs> Photo booth options, the easiest, the most cost effective way to add a photo booth option to your DJ business is with a social booth. A social booth is a photo booth that is strictly for texting and emailing or uploading directly to a social media platform. <clears throat> it is great because I can put together a social booth for under $1,000 full with the backdrop with everything. I uh, get an iPad, they're four or 500 bucks now, if that. Um, you can get a housing for it, which is a couple hundred bucks. You get all the other stuff, it's less than a thousand dollars. You find a software, I use Halo 2 uh, from Simple Booth. It's real great, real easy. It works without internet as well, um, except for the actual texting. What it does is it ends up queuing up all the stuff. So when you do get to good internet, it will send everything out. Uh, because that's the, thing with a social booth, you need to make sure that there is internet either at the venue or you have to bring a hotspot. I have tons of hotspots that go out with every single one of my social booths. So the client gets the instant gratification of, ooh, I just got my photo. I just got my photo. <laughs> That's what they want. They don't want to get it the next day when you finally get back to home, you turn on the photo booth and then it hooks up to the internet and blasts them all out. That's the re great redundancy about a software that it'll queue them all up, but the clients want them right then and there. <clears throat> so that's a social booth. A uh, traditional photo booth is one that prints. So any photo booth that really prints is what I refer to as a traditional booth. Um, <clears throat> you could get either four by six prints or the photo strips. Those are fantastic. <clears throat> Those nowadays also come with the social aspect as well. So 
They can also get their photo via text and email, and they can get a print. I usually provide a memory book as a keepsake to all of my clients who get the option of printing. So we'll print an extra copy out, we'll put it in a little memory book, have encourage the guests to sign it, <clears throat> say, hey, you look beautiful today, whatever. That way at the end of the night, I'm not only handing them a flash drive of all their photos, but I'm handing them a physical book with messages from their family and friends with a print of every single photo. <clears throat> then there's some novelty booths. There's stuff like the mirror photo booth that looks like a magic mirror from Snow White. Uh, there's a roaming photo booth where you can actually hold it in your hand and walk around and, hey, I got a photo booth. <laughs> uh, a robot booth I saw here last year. A robot just walking around, you know, rolling around, taking photos. You guys are also here at the photo booth convention too. So make sure you check all that stuff out tomorrow. They're, they're all going to be all over the place. There's stuff that I saw from $700 on up. I mean, there's tons of different options. Um, novelty booths are great, but if I'm giving you guys some advice, I would say start with the easier thing first. Work your way up to the other stuff. <clears throat> because a novelty booth can be encompassing. I know when I bought my first mirror booth, uh, not only the fact that it was really expensive, it was really heavy. I needed two to three guys. I needed a van or a truck that couldn't fit in the back of my car, which adds to the costs of things every time you use it. It also adds to um, staffing. You now have to hire a couple extra people just to use the booth. So what I found is start with the easy stuff. A social booth, I could fit in my front seat. Green screen, traditional photo favors, the only thing that takes up a lot of space, truthfully, is the printer. And the printer nowadays, you know, yay big. So I could fit that in my car. You don't have to jump to a van, truck, or whatever for those novelty booths to start. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, a lot of photo, booth, uh, photo booths are now internet-based. So you need internet to work some of the functions. Um, as with the other two things, traditional photo booth and the green screen, I use the same type of photography style backdrop. I use like a, a fun sequin, gold, uh, mermaid sequin, uh, silver sequin, something like that. Something fun that stands out, um, <clears throat> makes it a little bit more cool. And the great thing about sequins is that they attract people's attention from far away. So people know that there's a photo booth there. Um, it also makes for a much more for professional picture. The one thing I don't like about those roaming photo booths that, you know, hey, I got a photo booth. There's always something behind it that you don't want in the photo. There's a guy drunk going, yeah, all right, that's awesome, you know, trying to <laughs> get, in the, get in the photo. Uh, I also believe that when you do something, you want to do it in a professional manner. Uh, I've seen a lot of competition in my area. They have that $20,000 mirror photo booth, and they have the crowd as a background. They don't even set up a background. And to me, that's like, wow, you're going to get all this dark stuff in the back and weird things going on in the background when people really just want to focus on their photo and upload it to social media and share it with people. <clears throat> I also use a lot of iPad-based photo booths. Those are great for the social media, uh, social booths. Uh, with iPads, they are harder to print from. You need a print server, which is pretty much iPad has to talk to a PC, PC has to talk to a printer, and then it finally prints. As opposed to if you have a PC-based photo booth, PC, printer, go. There's just an extra step with the iPad because uh, they're not designed to print. Uh, I know that I also, my software uploads to Dropbox automatically. So when the photo is taken, it automatically uploads the photo to Dropbox. I have a laptop open with Dropbox on it. I see the photo. I can hit print right from there too. You eliminate the print server, but you're still having to do that extra step regardless. Um, <clears throat> with any photo booth that's different than the green screen or the traditional photo favors is they all need graphics of some kind. You need to either create them or you need to have somebody else who does. <clears throat> you need to have somebody put those templates together, add the logo to it, <clears throat> um, make it the color that they want, send it to the client, get approval on it. There's a lot more that goes into a photo booth typically than those other traditional green screen photos type stuff. <clears throat> the great thing about it though is that you can charge additionally for custom graphics, which is a good upsell. So 
if you want, if somebody wants something custom, I know my wife is a Photoshop whiz. She can do something in like 10 minutes. I charge a hundred bucks for her 10 minutes. You can go online, find tons of places that people that will do graphics for you for new, virtually little cost, but you can upsell it because it's custom. When you use the word custom, it means money. And if people are okay with getting something custom, they're okay with spending that extra money. <clears throat> and of course with photo booths, photo booths uh, it's customary to have props, whether it be signs, hats, stuff that people can wear. All that stuff is pretty customary with a photo booth. What I would suggest would be to spend the extra money on the good props. That's like the PVC ones, the wood ones. Um, they'll last longer. You don't have to replace them all the time. You don't have to worry about going to an event and having folded ratty props and people are saying, oh, is this a prop? Oh, there's a big line through it or whatever. Uh, the only problem with props is that people tend to walk away with props. So you will have to replace stuff every now and then. Here's some samples of some of the stuff that um, my photo booth software does. As I said, this is uh, Halo 2 by Simple Booth. Um, it lets me pretty much do anything I want. I can change the graphics at the bottom, uh, add their names, I can put in logos. <clears throat> uh, I can even use my photo booths with the custom step and repeats like I was showing you earlier. That's what those photos are on the right. You see the one that says Ava and then Ryan and Alexandra over there. Those are custom step and repeat backdrops that you can use your photo booth with as well. So you can kind of merge some of those things together, add that as an upcharge. Um, what's also great about uh, Halo 2 is that it also offers digital props too. So uh, the photo all the way at the bottom on the left, the guy has hearts for eyes, he has a mustache, he has a beard, the guy next to him has a top hat. Those were all added digitally after the photo was taken by the, by the guest. They went up there, they hit the, oh, I want a beard, oh, I want a hat. They added it, boom, done. Nice and easy. So it's, it's kind of cool to add some digital things as well. Uh, you can also see the gold sequin backdrop that we have in the top left one and the silver one on the bottom left, even though it doesn't look quite silver there. <clears throat> With anything that you're adding, whether it be traditional green screen photo booth, there's going to be some equipment maintenance that you're going to have to make sure you take care of. Uh, you're going to need to provide regular maintenance to all your stuff. You're going to have to make sure that those backdrops get cleaned. If they can be washed, great. If they can't, you might have to replace them after a little while because um, people will step on them. People will, you know, have a drink in their hand. Whoa! Now you have a wine stain all over it. <laughs> you, you, stuff has to, you, you have to constantly be on top of that stuff. Uh, I typically schedule all of our repairs and stuff like that for slower times of the year. Our slower time is January. Philadelphia, people are afraid of weather. They stop having parties for the most part. So January, I'm sending all my printers in to be refurbished, cleaned, taken care of. <clears throat> so that when it comes to the start of the season, they're ready to go and I don't have to worry about them. Uh, weekly repairs, issues. Let's say you're at an event and the printer jams. Well, good news is you had a backup printer because <laughs> you should always have a backup. But the bad news is now you, on Monday, you have to be the one who goes in there and tries to unjam that printer. And once you get it unjammed, four hours later, you, <laughs> you're gonna be able to get on with your day. You have to expect little things like that I exaggerate it obviously, but you have to expect those weekly issues, those weekly things that might pop up. It might not be initially because everything's brand new, but over time you'll see this pops up, that pops up, so you gotta check that out. <clears throat> Other thing uh, I can tell you is make sure you check everything that you send out. When you start getting into photo favors, you get into a lot of moving parts, cameras, printers, wires, all these things, just like when you're DJing, <coughs> you have to make sure it works. <coughs> I know when we send out a lot of our stuff, we test the lights before they go out. We test the speakers before they go out. Make sure everything's working. You're gonna have to do that with your photo stuff. Now, does it have to be every week? No, but you should try to at least set it up every week, make sure everything's working, make sure the printers are good, make sure nothing's going wrong, so that when it gets to the party, you're confident that everything's gonna work. 
as I mentioned, backup equipment. You gotta have it. If you don't, you're just asking for a problem. Make sure you have backup equipment for anything that you're doing. Backup backdrop, a backup camera, whatever. Make it easy. Make it easier on your uh, on yourself. Peace of mind. And then, of course, uh, future stuff. <clears throat> you know that you've had a uh, printer or a camera for three years now. It might be getting towards the end of its life. A lot of the stuff can last a, a long time, but the more you use it, the more it's going to need to be replaced eventually. So make sure you budget for those things. Make sure you look into the future. Say, hey, I'm going to need to do this, this, and this. Or, you know what, I want to buy a couple new backdrops that I don't currently have to offer some variety to my clients. I can budget for that in a month or two months or whatever. So that's what I mean by future plans. Here comes the biggie. <laughs> for me, staffing is always the number one issue because right now you guys are DJs, right? You go to the party and you DJ. Well, you can't DJ and do a photo booth or a photo novelty at the same time, which means you have to add staff. And for those of you who haven't added staff yet, I'm going to run through some of these things that you should look for in the staff. And then, of course, to train them. Obviously, they have to, you have to be able to trust them. My first staff was my family, my brothers. I have four brothers. They all worked for me at one point or another. My wife was my first party dancer. We were best friends at the time. I said, hey, I just started a DJ company. Want to be a, want to be a dancer? Sure. Great. I, I trusted them because, A, they were family. They were friends. They also did it. They also wanted to do a better job for me because of our relationship. Now, over the years, I've had a couple friends try to take advantage. Of course, you know, hey, yeah, I don't have to show up right on time, do I? No, you do. If you set the expectations from the beginning, most of the time you can separate the friends and business aspect of things. Because um, these people are going to represent you, and you have to be represented the way you feel you want to be represented. When you go out and DJ, you put all you're all into it. You want your photo novelty to have that same feel. Uh, I also went on, uh, I also do social media posts to try to find staff as well. Um, all those 800 friends you have on Facebook or whatever, they're people that know you or you've come in contact with at some point. Hey, anybody looking to make a couple extra bucks? Let me know. They're like warm potential employees, you know? Um, it's like the second level there. Uh, so that's what I typically do in order to try to find people. Uh, of course, you go the traditional ways. Indeed, Monster, all those job sites, you could try to do that. Uh, whenever you do that, though, and you interview these people, you have to be diligent with your interviews. You have to make sure that they meet all your prerequisites. I will be honest with you. I've hired people. They've, de they've sat in front of me. They gave me the best interview. And I was, oh, everybody's so excited. I think this guy's going to be great. I, uh, only to find out he doesn't have a car. How's he, how's he not get, how's he going to get there? You know, how can I trust that he's going to Uber or take public transportation to get to my event on time? What if I'm DJing over at this event, but I sold my photo novelty on this event? Well, I can't be in two places at once. How do I know that, that they're going to come to my office, pick that up, take it over there if they don't have a car? Do they have insurance for their car? That's important too. I actually hired a guy once <clears throat> um, and I had him come to my office, gave him my cargo van full of audio equipment, uh, lighting equipment, photo booth equipment, sent him to go to the party, start setting up because I was coming from another event. And later on, about two weeks later, I found out his license was suspended six months earlier. I didn't run a background check. I didn't look into that a little bit. My bad. I know now for the future. Always make sure that everybody has everything that you need in order to do the job that you're asking them to do from a prerequisite standpoint. Next thing is <clears throat> backup staff. For every photo novelty you add to your repertoire of stuff, you should add a bunch of people. Not just one or two to do the job. Like I told you, traditional photo favors take three people to do if we got frames and stuff like that. Hire eight people. Because there's going to be times when people get sick, 
There's gonna be times that people have to go to their own event, or they're like they're a guest at a wedding, they're graduating, whatever. So things are gonna come up, and if you only have three people and you sold it, you're out of luck if those are the only three people that know how to do it. So if you have seven, eight people that you can constantly rotate so that they feel like they're being kept busy and in the mix, they'll continue to work for you guys and they will do a good job and they'll also be easier to you know, uh, stick with you, especially when things like sickness and all that stuff comes up. Um, I pay my photo people very well compared to other companies. Uh, companies in my area, they sometimes pay only like 50 bucks. Uh, I pay all my people, they start at $100 per event. Three hours, four hours, five hours, doesn't matter. <clears throat> the reason I pay them well is because I figure if you pay them well, they're gonna do a better job for you. Plus, where else are they gonna make 20 to $30 an hour uh, for a part-time gig? <clears throat> and I do cover their expenses if they're driving far, whether it be tolls, gas, stuff like that. It makes more sense. If they know I have their back when it comes to those things, that's great. Sometimes we, we get to a party, those fancy pens that we got for the photo booth uh, memory book, dry. Brand new ones, right out of the box, they're dry. They run over to CVS, they grab one. Hey, I spent $5 on, a, on some pens. Okay, I got you. Not a problem. They're going out of their way to help me, so I gotta go out of their way to help them. Make sure they're taken care of. <clears throat> My biggest pet peeve is the last one right over here. No day of call outs. From the second I interview them, I tell them, you call out the day of, that's your last day working for me. Simple as that. It is very hard to find staff the day of. If they call you at 10 o'clock, 10 in the morning, you have an event that starts at 1 p.m., oh, I can't be there. Well, you're, at a, you're DJing, you can't do both. Just because you know how to do both doesn't mean you can. So you have to make sure that they know no call outs the day of. I tell my people, listen, if you're sick, come sick. I'll put you on the frame thing. Make it the easiest job you have that day. <clears throat> if you really feel you can't do it, call one of the other eight people that I hired. Try to get them to cover you. But if no one can cover you, I expect you to be there because these people for their special day are expecting something. And I, if you're not there, they, I can't deliver. So it's very important. I always do the no day of call outs. <clears throat> when it comes to training your staff, I do a, a bunch of different ways. I bring them to the office. I will train them in the office. <clears throat> I will sit down. We will build the photo booth or the photo favor set. We'll break it down. We'll build it again and we'll break it down. We'll build it again and we'll break it down. We'll do it four or five times so they can kind of get the gist and understanding of how it's <clears throat> built and broken down. I'll also work with them on some of the troubleshooting things, make it nice and easy for them so that there's a little practice involved and some more personal one-on-one uh, -on -one training. We also have manuals <clears throat> that go out to every event. So there's a green screen manual, there's a photo booth manual, there's a photo favor manual. Just gives them the highlights and the, and the things that they're gonna need to know. If they run into a problem, there's a troubleshooting section. Makes it nice and easy so that if they're not coming up to bother you while you're in the middle of a DJ set or you're doing introductions or you're doing something, uh, you're at another event, <laughs> they're not calling you saying, hey, what's going on? They have everything on the manual. We have recently started integrating videos into our training as well. We're we'll watching videotape ourselves, setting everything up, breaking it down, going through the troubleshooting things. We give those to our, our new employees as well and ask them to, to watch that. And we just started instituting a quiz. So before they go out for their first event, they gotta take the 20 question quiz. There's a couple easy ones in there, some hard ones in there, but it's mainly to make sure that they've been paying attention through all their training. But the best way I always find for training is the on-the-job training. Bring them out to three events before you send them on an event by themselves. Show them how to do it while at an event. Let them get into the flow of how an event works. Let them feel the pace of everything. You know, some people get very inundated because you have grandmom leaning over you. Got my photo yet? You got my photo yet? 
people need to see that stuff in action so that they're not freaked out when that stuff happens because it's, it's going to happen. So if you bring them to a few events where you or your number one person can train them, take them through the event, that's, a, that's a, a, the best way to do it. I usually do the first event is on them. So it's, it's, it's non-paid. Second event is usually at a reduced rate. Third event, I'll either give them the full rate or a reduced rate depending on where I think they are in the, in the training process. So they'll see themselves stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. Plus, by them doing the first one for free, they're showing you that they're in. That they're in for you and they're willing to make a commitment so, and do the first one for free. Last thing on here, of course, is the dress code. Formal event, they should be dressed like a guest, formally. No shorts, no jeans, no t-shirts at a formal event. If you're at a bar, if you're at an outside party where it's 100 degrees, different story. But they should know that they should be properly dressed. <clears throat> I've hired people that don't own a nice pair of pants and a nice shirt. So you gotta go out and buy one if you wanna work for me. And if they show up in something less, Run and get something right now. It, it, you're not going to work this event in anything less. <clears throat> Getting to the fun stuff. Once you have that photo novelty, let's, let's sell it. Okay? The easiest and best way to sell your photo novelty is to your already booked and past clients. Remember when I said earlier that when you give a client to somebody else, you lose them. Well, if you did a wedding for somebody five years ago and they're in your database, send them an email blast. Hey, photo booth just added to our stuff. Great for birthday parties, whatever. Oh, well, now they have kids. They have a five-year-old. Hey, maybe we should have a, add a photo booth to little Johnny's birthday party. Who's gonna offer? Oh, I just got an email from the people that DJ'd our wedding. They already have a nice warm and fuzzy about you, and now you're telling them, hey, I got something else that you could possibly use on another type of an event. Have them be a client for life. Have them use you multiple times for multiple things. Why not? So past clients, anybody you currently have booked, call them, email them, text them. Yo, just got this brand new photo novelty. It's fantastic. I can give you a good deal to, uh, you know, because I just got it, whatever. They've already bought from you. They're already excited to have you as their DJ. They're going to be more inclined to buy something else from you as well. <clears throat> uh, the next thing is, of course, you should do uh, free events. Free events are great. If free events will get you a bunch of things. First thing is it creates a buzz about your novelty because you haven't used it yet. So if you do a few free events, people are like, oh, I didn't know they did that. Kind of builds a little bit of a buzz. It can also get you testimonials. If you give it to somebody for free, they're more inclined to say, oh, that photo booth was great or whatever. And now you have some testimonials that you can show other clients. What's also great is you can get marketing material from those events, photos of it being used, samples like the ones I showed you. You can actually get some nice samples with actual guests from weddings and other events in, in it. It gives you that marketing material so when you're putting all that stuff together to show other clients, you have all that marketing material. As, as I said, it's also a great way to train your staff. If you have some new people you want to train, take them out to a freebie. Freebies are great because if they make a little mistake, it was free to the client. It was They're just happy they're getting something. So they don't really care if there's some troubles uh, with some of that staffing. And I, quite frankly, sometimes I'm honest with them. I said, listen, I'm training some new people. I can give you a photo booth for free for a few hours if you'd like. You know, But you know, I am training. I just want you to know. They're like, oh. I'll take that, no problem. I haven't, turned, I haven't had anybody turn that down yet, really. Um, <clears throat> now you're, with this here, next thing is the potential clients. Anybody you meet at a bridal show, anybody you're talking to, hey, what do you do? I do DJ, but I also do photo booths or photo novelties. So now you're in their mind for other stuff, not just DJ. So, oh yeah, I know this guy, he does DJ and this and that, so on and so forth. Now, with this next one, you can flip the script from what we talked about earlier. You can be that white label for everybody else. Go to your other DJ friends in the local area. Go to photographers, uh, video people, anybody you know, venues. Say, listen, 
we will provide a photo novelty under your brand, give you a wholesale rate to do that. Let them do the selling. Easy money. If they're selling it, you do the white label and you get the money. You get the gig. And it could also lead to some nice partnerships like with venues and stuff like that. <clears throat> we uh, had a couple of photo booths uh, installed uh, at a couple of venues. We would just send the attendant on a Saturday. It's already installed, ready to go. Makes it nice and easy. Now, now you've created a bond with the venue as well and they're just as dependent on you as you are on, on them and it makes it for a nice seamless thing and then they include it with their package and they pay you. <clears throat> um, next thing is upgrade, upgrades equal profit. I sell stanchions. They cost me $200 to buy because I bought the really nice bronze ones, right? Um, I sell them for 150 bucks. One, one event they were paid for. But every event after that, $150 in my pocket every time. Red carpet, $89 on Amazon. Charge at least $100 for it in my pocket. Upgrades equal profit. Frames, magnet backs to the, to the stuff. Anything you can think of to add to what they see or what they get or experience is going to give you extra money in your pocket. So on average, if I am getting about $500 in profit from an average regular photo novelty, now I can extend that to $800, $900, even $1,000 profit just by adding upgrades that I was, you know, that I already own for the most part. <clears throat> Finally, uh, I use my photo booths, especially my social booths, because they're the things that cost me the least amount of money. It's just one staff person to go out, I give them a hundred bucks, cost me a hundred bucks, makes it easy. I use that as a promotional tool. I have clients, corporate clients, I have wedding clients, mitzvah clients, they're looking at a really big package and I want to seal the deal. I'm going to throw you in a social photo booth. It's only costing me a hundred bucks, but I'm getting a contract for 4,800. You can use it as a tool depending on what the novelty is. Obviously, it costs me a lot more to do uh, the traditional photo favors because I have three staff people. It cost me more to do the green screen because I have three staff people. It's a little bit harder to do it that way. But if something only costs you a little bit and it's going to get you a whole lot more, use it as a promotional tool. It can be really effective in closing deals with people. <clears throat> um, it seals the deal, as I said, <clears throat> um, or it just it helps you get something a lot larger and a lot bigger, something down the line. That brings us to the very end here. So uh, if we have a few minutes, I, I'll take a couple questions if anybody has any questions. Yeah, Jordan, shoot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can answer that for you. Uh, free event is based on you guys adding a photo novelty to your business. When I first started DJing, um, maybe so, maybe you have the same experience. First year, I did any event I could. Whether it was free, paid, whatever, I was doing everything I could to get the name out there. Um, I would never do that now. I don't do free events unless it's going to get me something else. If it's a client that I have a long-lasting relationship with, they've given me thousands and thousands of dollars over the years. Like I have this corporate client, uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. They spend $20,000 with me a year. If they want a free photo booth for you know, their two-hour whatever, to me that's worth it. Otherwise, I don't need to get the word out that I do photo booths or photo novelties and stuff like that. So for me, free photo booths and free events like that are not going to work. For people who are just starting out and adding that stuff, it, as I said, it gets you those tools, those free, that, the pictures of it in use, the marketing material, all that stuff that you can use to then sell it. Once you have it going, let it go. And you don't have to do the free stuff because then people associate you with that particular uh, novelty. Yeah. 
Absolutely. We have a combo all the time for photo booths. We usually do a um, either a discount or we, we, we don't necessarily call it a combo. Uh, where we are, we do like a, we call it the, 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 our version of the Comcast triple play. Because <laughs> um, we usually, we I also do photography, video, lighting. So I say, listen, if you do a DJ, lighting, you know, up lights and a photo booth, we're going to package that together, put that triple play together, give you a nice deal. And it usually, it usually, it works, it works a lot. And that's, people love a deal. And when you say, hey, you put them both together, the more you do, the better deal you're gonna get, they're more inclined to, to give you that business. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of the times it's, a, it's more of a personal feel. Honestly, uh, I know the photo booths I have. Um, I researched every. I went to every booth. Uh, you know, every booth manufacturer. I looked at every spec, figured out exactly what would work for me. I wanted something light, easy to set up. You know, those are the things that were important to me. Um, honestly, there's so many great photo booth companies, and there's great photo booth companies here. Uh, you'll see a lot of different varieties. Use the one that you feel comfortable with, has good software that you can learn and you're comfortable with. Because um, that's really the key. You have to be comfortable with it because you're going to be teaching other people to, to use it. So it has to be something easy, comfortable, and that's the best advice I could give you honestly is start easy. That's why I suggested a social photo booth because those are the easiest to do. Software is very simple. You can learn it in five minutes and you don't really have a lot of issues with, the, with that kind of thing. My most used booth is my social booth. Most used booth. Uh, Sweet 16, they don't want prints. They just want the text, put it up on Instagram, Snapchat. Weddings, a lot of these young bride and grooms, hey, I don't need a print. The only time they get a print is when mom complains that they didn't get a print and then mom ends up paying for the prints. Because she wants the prints. <clears throat> so, uh, same thing with bar bot mitzvahs. The kids just want the, hey, want it on my phone. Put it up on Snapchat. Instagram, whatever. So social booth is definitely the most used thing that I, I have. Um, it, it used to be green screen, and then that switched about two years ago once the social booth really started getting popular and the technology was there. Any other quick questions? Cool. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. My friends, a big round of applause for Mr. Ross Axelrod. Awesome job, Ross. <laughs>